The legend is back. Do you fancy a look at the Maximus 11 gene? And if you don't know what the gene is, it's the MATX ROG board. Okay, so one of the things that it does support, if you have a look, double capacity dim. There are some uh, memory sticks coming that are double stacked. So essentially one stick will be uh, 16 gigabytes. So that's pretty mental. So you'll be able to go 32 gigabytes with two dims, which is rather nuts. And that's just because of the stuff that they've done with all the Shin Fandango going on with the uh, boards because it is only a dual dim board. Now I know a lot of people go a little bit nuts about that, but you know, we'll talk about it in more detail in a minute. Inside the box, as always, you get the uh, sticker pack. You can see with all the other boards, it's all pretty much the same. If you pause and quick there, you'll be able to see the um, code for the uh, cable, uh, cable mods, 20% off. The other thing that you do get with this is the, um, this is your M.2 holder. It's called uh, DIM2, I believe, uh, but it comes with heat sinks now, which is all rather nice. Again, you can see this on the Extreme and some of the other big boards. Then you get uh, SATA cables and uh, your Wi-Fi dongle. But, so we can have a decent look at the board overall. I will show you it all lit up as well. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna instantly say about the fact that it's MATX, which is four slots but we've only got one PCI Express, like full-size PCI Express. So this is a perplexing one. Having the uh, open four here is kind of strange. I suppose if you were using, I don't know, like an, an add-in RAID card or something, that might be useful, but this is wired to the CPU. This is wired to the uh, PCH or the chipset, so it is kept separate. Um, other things that we can talk about while we're here is the uh, M.2s down the slide, but we do have the uh, DIM2 as well, which is up in the top left-hand corner. So this would clip in like this. And... So top left-hand corner, two 8-pin EPSs. So that's your CPU power on the top left. Uh, just underneath it, if you look carefully as well, just over in that corner, there is a full power PWM. Now the reason why it's that color and not black denotes that it is full power. So you just get 12 volts of that. So that can help you uh, with that. Uh, it also might make you realize why it's blowing an absolute hoolie when they're going. Then you get your three um, uh, PWMs along the top. So you've got an AIO header, you've got a normal CPU header, and your CPU optional header. Then over in the right-hand corner, you can see you've got a four-pin PWM, your Memo K switch, the DIM2 slot, as you can see it there. Then I'm just having, I'm going to zoom you in so that I can see it because it's difficult for me to see. So we've got the LN2 mode and then the slow mode. Uh, you've got your uh, PCI poster up here. And then when you go down, you can see that you've got the start and then you've got reset, your retry and your safe boot. Safe boot, you can just save a profile to and I don't know, let's say 4.5 gigahertz, really low volts, but you know it works. You can set it to whatever you want anyway. Um, and that's all done in the BIOS. Then 24 pins, and we'll slowly skim past that. And then you get your uh, external USB 3. You can see another full speed fan header there. It is a four pin though. It, it, I know it does look like a three pin there. From a different angle, you can see that it is a four though. And then if we go down a little bit further, external USB 3.1, you get four SATAs. Right, now down in this uh, bottom corner, you see the water flow sensor and you've got your two thermal sensors as well. That's for temperature sensors for your water cooling and you can have one for in and one for out or you can have them in separate places if you want. This is the first proper up close glimpse that you get of the bottom of the board though. So all the panels, are all the pins for the external, so like the front panel headers, USBs, this is actually a fan header which is epic, but it's, um, they, they point downwards which is pretty cool. So there's your RGB header, that's all pointing downwards. I'm just gonna swing the board around as well. So then you get um, a couple of USB 2s. This 
is the Asus node, which you might have seen on the other boards, which you'll have to see later on. These copper outputs here so that you can uh, use your multimeter to be able to take accurate voltages from the board. And then you have at the on the far left, before we get to the Supreme FX, the external audio header. So nicely, nicely all zoomed in. And what we can do is come up this way so that you can have a better look at the, the VRMs. So you are zoomed right in, but you can see them all underneath there. And if I spin it around a little bit more, you'll see some thermal pad as well. So you can see the top of the choke and then you see the thermal pad. So it does all look rather lush and lovely. Uh, what we can also do while we're here is spin this round and then you can have a look at the uh, rear I.O. So you've got your BIOS flashback and your clear CMOS switch, normal USB 2 with uh, a PS2. Then you've got your HDMI, which if we go in, is the only uh, video output that you get on this. But, uh, you know, with a board this high end, that's going to probably be used for emergencies more than anything else. Then, if you look at your SS10, that's USB uh, 3.1 Gen 2. So that's the difference between the SS10 and the SS. So one's normal USB, one's like super, super, duper quick USB. You can see your uh, BIOS flashback header is there, your Wi-Fi, and then you can come down to the uh, digital audio. So we'll finish with the board lit up, and I just want to show you that you do get RGBs around the far edge of the board that basically they go down against your case really, so you can see a nice reflection there. Uh, up in the top left hand corner you can see that there are some lights on the uh, IO which look nice, but the main event is really the gene in the center and that does look really, really pretty. It's quite bright, so you're going to get a little bit of underlighting on the top of your graphics card, you're going to get a little bit going up towards the CPU as well. The one over here it looks good in this light it on the camera, but it's quite, it's very subtle to the naked eye. It would look good in a dark case, but if you had any like white LED fans or any other kind of lighting in the case, I fear that the IO will get uh, lost. The, um, the one here just below the CPU is probably, I would say, twice as bright. It's definitely done and uh, lit in a different way. I don't think you'll have too many issues with that. But over the I.O., I think it could possibly get lost. But it's going to depend on your case. If you just had a dark case. But anyway, this has been a very, very quick preview. I'm very excited to be working with this board. There aren't going to be uh, very many of them. Um, I think I'm one of the few that managed to get one in the UK. I did say to you that there is the M.2 down the side. There's two M.2s underneath there. I didn't take it off, but you don't really need to see any more. Um, so check back on the 19th. Now I may be reviewing this for NDA, don't know yet. There's a couple of things that might be possibly coming as an added extra for this to me to bundle together and all review together, being double slot dims and all that sort of stuff. So I can cover a lot of bases. Uh, but the fact that the gene is back and obviously the gene name is a ROG thing, I'm actually quite excited to see if this is gonna be a good step up from the MATXs that we've been seeing from in the Strix branding. So. Yeah, check back soon and let me know what you think underneath.